Hey guys, in the last video in this series we were talking about using some Bootstrap 3 themes to uh, kickstart the CSS and JS um, in our website. Uh, let's just go to it right here. Um, this is just a sneak peek. Well, it's not a sneak peek. This is basically um, what came out of the box uh, from the Bootstrap 3 theme that I bought, which was um, Smart Admin right here at rapbootstrap.com. Um, so let's just close these two out here. And um, I just want to talk a bit more about some initial um, considerations we should have in the beginning um, when beginning a project. Um, number one, we want this project to be under version control. Um, so whether you use Subversion or Git or something else, um, you want to have um, you want to have your software version controlled so you can, if you get yourself into trouble, you can easily roll back um, to a previous version. I normally use Git to version control my projects and you can find out about Git as well as download it for free from git-sem.com. Um, however, it's already installed on my computer so um, what we can do is just get the um, get what I have so far um, under version control. So right now my project is here under, under FF new and if I type, if I type LL which is, oh, which is short for, for this. Um, we can see the project right here. So if I, anytime when you're using git and you want to know the status of your project, you can just type git status. And we can see we have a fatal error here. It's not a git repository. So we need to make this into a git repository. Now where you want to type this command git init is from the root of your project. So right now I'm in the root of my project. In Laravel, the root will be where you have the app folder, you have the public folder. This is your uh, this is your project root. So inside here we're going to type git init and it says initialized empty git rep repository. If I type git status we'll see um, it is a repository now but we have all of these untracked files. So what I want to do is add all of these um, to my repository so I'll type git add period and period um, references the current directory so everything and we'll see all of those will get added. If I type git status again, we'll see all of that stuff um, was added to version control here. Okay. And um, the next thing we need, I want to do is commit this. So I want to make a commit. So I'm going to type git commit dash m and I'm just going to call this initial commit. Okay. And now all of these have been added. If I type git status again, we'll see um, nothing to commit working directory clean, git log, and we see our last commit there, initial commit. Optionally, what you can also do is, um, you know, have this hosted, have your repository ho hosted on a, a remote server as well. Um, I am a paid member of GitHub, so obviously if it's your own personal project, uh, depending on whether you want it public or not, um, you know, you'll use a private repository or a public one, but in this case, I don't want all of my source code um, on the internet for this. So I can go into my repository section of GitHub. So let's create a new remote repository here. I'll click on repositories in GitHub, and I will click new here, and I will call this one ff underscore new. It's going to be a private repository, and we can click here, create repository. And it's going to have all the instructions that you need right here. We've already done um, our git init and we've done our first commit. The next command that we want to copy right here is this git remote add origin. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell our repository where is the remote address for this. So when we push it to remote, where should it go? And that has the address it should go to right there. Okay, so we'll just go over to our command line here and we'll paste that in. Git remote add origin and then the address of where it should go. Now I'll, I'll click enter right there and that's done. Um, if we just go back over here if we want to push to it and we can do that. There's no harm in doing that. We'll see git push dash u origin master and that dash u uh, stands for upstream and what that will do is in the future um, it will set this remote address um, as your remote address in your settings in the future you won't need to type all this, you can just type git push and it will know where to go. So um, let's go put that in here, I'll paste it in. Okay, and you'll see it's compressing and it's writing the objects and it's going to upload this to GitHub now. 
Uh, we won't wait for that to finish. Um, that's going to work just fine. And we can go over to the project. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about in this video, we will get into code um, in the next one. But I want to talk about um, basically the URL that you will use on your local environment. Now, one thing that you don't want to be doing is working on your localhost with something like this. Uh, localhost. Um, basically, what's going to happen is when you're going to have more and more projects, you're not going to go where to put them. You're going to start putting them in subdirectories, and uh, it's going to become messy. So, like in my case, if I have a if I have a domain like freightform.com, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something like freightform.dev. Um, right now, I already have something for this, so. Um, what I've done is for this project is just going to be ff.dev and the way this is done is with virtual hosts and um, setting up custom hosts on uh, on your computer um, in my case I use uh, I use MAMP but you don't have to use MAMP if you're on Windows um, you can use package like XAMP or WAMP and basically basically they're just going to help you to set the host and things like that MAMP Pro makes it really easy but um, it doesn't need to be that easy um, so basically you can see my different hosts uh, right here like freightform.dev that's the old one and the new one is right here um, ff.dev and um, basically what this is doing is you know once I click this button stop start um, it's going to write to our host file um, so if I go over here, if I type, for example, nano um, etsy slash host, you'll see what uh, MAMP does for you. It finds your host file. This will be different if you're on um, if you're on Mac or Windows, um, but you can see it's just added them all in there, and you could do this uh, manually by yourself as well. So we can go over to that in the browser now, and you will see um, the home page I have set up right here. The URL is ff.dev, so we can create as many virtual hosts as we want. And I'm going to talk more about this local right here, and we're going to get it into a bit of code in the next video.